G'day and welcome to another episode of 3 Minute Histology with Jamie Chapman. Today we're going to be having a look at the pancreas. Now the pancreas is an unusual gland in that it's both an exocrine and an endocrine gland. So it has secretions which are released via ducts uh, and it also has secretions which are released in terms of hormones directly into the bloodstream. So it's a very unusual and a very interesting gland histologically. So let's start our 3 minutes. So if we think of this as a gland contributing to the digestive system, then um, much like the major salivary glands, we can see similarities with some of those. So we have an outer denser regular connective tissue capsule. It sends in connective tissue septa, which divides the pancreas into lobules. So we can see the connective tissue here, and within that connective tissue, we can see some of these major blood vessels. But if we zoom in, we can actually see it's quite a basophilic uh, tissue found within the gland and then scattered amongst all of this basophilic tissue we have these pale staining circular regions. These little pale staining circular regions are actually the endocrine pancreas which are in structures referred to as islets of Langerhans. So here's a little island. Islet means a little island. So a little island of uh, endocrine cells made up of alpha cells and beta cells and so on that are producing hormones which are regulating blood glucose. So they secrete hormones such as glucagon and insulin which help to regulate blood glucose. Outside of the islets of Langerhans, we have the majority of the tissue of the pancreas, which is the exocrine pancreas. And it's made up of all of these protein-producing or serous-only uh, secretory acini. So they look very similar to what we saw with the parotid salivary gland. Round, circular, uh, cell, cells ranged circularly, nice round, bas um, basally located nuclei, uh, generally basal basophilia associated with the basal location of rough endoplasmic reticulum, and then the tops of the cell where we store uh, the enzymes as um, zymogen granules. Um, so they're all arranged into these structures. Now, just like in the uh, major salivary glands, we have intralobular ducts as well. However, you can see just at this magnification, they're not as clear and easy to identify as we saw with the major salivary glands. And the other difference being that the pancreas doesn't have striated ducts. So striated ducts are only found in the major salivary glands. So the intercalated ducts are the only duct cells which we find uh, within the pancreas. They're not easy to see. So this is representing a little bit of these these ducts. There's a nice little duct just over here. Um, so you can actually see a little duct here. Um, so they're, as you can see, they're not particularly easy to spot amongst this exocrine pancreas. So there's another little islet of Langerhans, another little one here and so on. So trying to find the uh, ducts associated with the, the um, uh, the asini can be really quite tricky, but that may be a way you can actually distinguish between a section of the parotid salivary gland and the uh, uh, pancreas itself, other than, of course, the islets of Langerhans. So that was just an overview. There's another nice little duct. That was just an overview of um, the pancreas, um, the endocrine and exocrine portions, um, and I hope you found that useful.